Hello, welcome to Studio Cap'n, I'm Eugene. Here at Studio Cap'n, we teach and create the future of immersive digital media. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to write for virtual reality. Now, there really are two different camps for how to write for virtual reality. One, three degrees of freedom, and the other one is six degrees of freedom. In three degrees of freedom, that is essentially a 360 video. That is you just being able to look around from a single spot. While well, six degrees of freedom means you are free to walk about, um, interact with different objects, and really follow the storyline more like a video game than a film. Now, with a traditional 360 video, you're going to be writing it much more like a Hollywood film. That means you have a single script, you have your different breaks, you have your dialogue, you have basically a single focus journey. But with Six Degrees of Freedom, you are essentially writing a game Bible. Basically, everything that you need to be put into this world has to go into your game Bible. That includes your plot, that means everything you need to know about the character, and everything about the lore of the world. Now, I think the best examples of games like this are going to be something along the lines of Skyrim VR. Uh, I, I definitely think Skyrim VR is a great example because you really do have so much lore, so much customization, uh, so much character development that you can actually put into the journey of the viewer. While with Three Degrees of Freedom, you really need to focus on either a three story, a three arc story, or something more along the lines of the Harmon cycle, which are things that we'll definitely tackle in another video. For anybody wanting to know just like traditional script writing for either your TV show or your movie or your screenplay, um, we have a video already done that actually covers from the viewpoint of Celtex. It's a little bit older, uh, and we made this video back when Celtex was free. It's not anymore, but all the different commands for script writing that you need to know um, are the same, no matter what software. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to script writing. Now, you can use cell text, you can use Final Draft, you can use Google Docs, uh, you can use Trellby, you can use Magic or Movie Magic. Uh, for this video, we're actually going to be using Google Docs with the screenwriting add on. And that add on is completely free. Uh, it's what I've been using for writing videos like this or any other uh, writing projects that I'm getting paid for. That's because, because at the end of the day, when I can just print it to PDF and I know that the end dents are all going to be the same at the end of the day, that's where we want to go. I do want to take a quick moment to thank our sponsor for this video, Puget Systems. They have been absolutely amazing in helping us with our video production work by providing us with some badass computers. I've seen them for a long time help support creators like ourselves, either Corridor Digital or Barnacles Nergasm, and we are so happy and honored to be part of the community for which they are sponsoring. Now in the G Suite marketplace, there is a plugin or an add-on called Screenplay Formatter. There's a link down below in the description to it. Uh, go ahead and install it. So once you have it installed, go ahead and open up a brand new document, call it Screenplay, and go to add-ons and then launch. Now I have not found an add-on specifically for 360 videos. So there is a little bit that we're going to have to do to, to make it act properly. Now I do want to point out that when you're writing, you're usually writing for one of four views. You have your front, your right, your back, and your left. Now these can be marked out by 
either one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. Um, I'm more of a fan of the A, B, C, D. And you're basically using it as an action notifier to where different things are happening in the scene. Now, usually when you have a traditional film, what you're doing is you are framing the camera appropriately to focus on exactly what you want the viewer to see. With a 360 video, because they have the freedom to look around, that's not always the case. You have to basically draw it out in the scene and cue them to look exactly where you want them to look. So we're going to start with a header. Now, there are two different types of headers. There is an INT and an EXT. INT stands for internal. EXT stands for external. So if we go EXT dot uh, what right after external you go you know it can be a field or a, say we're in a in a graveyard and then finally you want the time and we're gonna put night and that way we're setting up in this scene we are outside we are in a graveyard and it is nighttime from there we are going to be marking up our our actions so if I go A, which if we look back at our diagram, A is right in front of them. From here, we're basically describing the action that's going to be happening or we're describing the scene. So say a mist rolls in, several dark figures walk slowly to the viewer. See, which is behind you, a, a group of people ride up in trucks waving guns. So basically what we're doing is we are marking out exactly what's happening in the scene around the viewer. Now, the viewer is usually in one of two roles. It's usually, or, or three roles, technically. One, there's the god view, which is they're high up above, you're looking down, you can see everything that's going on, much like a mini-map. Uh, two, they are the, what I like to call the nipple, which is the thing in the middle of everything happening. And the third is the fly on the wall, which is you are off to the side. You are essentially watching what could be considered a stage play. And from there, everything gets folded out or unfolded in front of you. So what happens when we want a speaker? So let's, let's, add, let's add a new speaker. Um, we'll call this person Ryan. And Ryan is, I don't know, he, he's the leader of, of the people. And we'll, we'll add a parenthesis for uh, speech. And basically, uh, this is talking about the sort of cadence in which the dialogue is spoken. So it can be like a whisper, it can be yelled, it could be frantic, it could be softly, uh, whatever way that you want your dialogue to be given, that's an instruction, okay? And then finally, we have the dialogue, which is people hear me me now lend me your guns against this tide of the undead cool so we have the first speaker which is a, a character who who rides up um and we, re we really need to mention that inside of the action. So if I go back to C, uh, a group of people ride up in trucks waving guns. 
a tall, bearded man named Ryan is standing in the bed of a red truck. Uh, holding a shotgun, holding a shotgun. All right, so we have mentioned Ryan inside of the inside of the story. We've given him some dialogue. Um, we might go ahead and go add another speaker as a reply, and we might call this person zombie leader and for this uh, we might put parentheses softly and hard to hear and then from there we'll make sure that it's dialogue and it'll be like Argalof. Dead man coming. I, I I don't know what zombies would would sound like. <laughs> okay. So um we have our characters, they're having kind of a back and forth. Um we'll add a an action which would be B, B. So now that this dialogue is happening to my right of of the viewer. I mean, imagine yourself as the viewer. So the right is you know whatever's over here. What is happening? Uh, e large bomb falls from the sky. large flash of light and from here what we're going to do is we are going to add um, sound effects so SFX uh, those are sound effects VFX is talking about um, either practical or digital effects so Whistle of a bomb dropped. Great special effect. And right under it, um, we're going to go VFX. VFX. And in the VFX, um, large flash and explosion. Now, from there, maybe this is a very, very short scene. Um, we might go cut to, and now we have to go, what are we cutting to? Uh, say hand on map with, with a figure. putting a pin in it. We are going to go ahead and add another scene. Uh, and this is basically lining out what exactly we just cut to. And so maybe it'll be an internal place. Uh, I'll call it a war room. And this is also going to be at night. And from there, Maybe we'll add one last speaker. We'll call this person general. Uh, there's no such way, we're, no special instructions we're going to give this character and it's just going to be cut into dialogue. And the war has been one the living will beat the, the dead. So essentially we're making a very short zombie film. 
that is less than a page. And for this, we, we are going to, you know, put an A because this is happening in front of the camera. This is happening in front of the, wherever the uh, position of the camera is set up for your 360 film. Uh, we do need to add instructions though. So action, a room full of, a room full of soldiers are moving quickly as the air strike is being ordered. And from here, we're gonna add a little bit of SFX or sound effects. And that way uh, we'll know to have certain atmospheric audio playing whenever we go to record this. So soldiers being busy, phones ringing, lots of footsteps. And always like to give a little bit of extra room between the different items that we're doing. And so uh, from there, maybe we'll just fade out or fade to black and then end. And essentially we made a 360 video script in a very short amount of time. I don't think it's that hard. And once you know all the different commands and what they actually represent or stand for, it's really easy to do. So anyway, uh, we will be doing more videos on how exactly to write either game Bibles or the Harmon cycle or the three arc structure in specifically for either three degrees of freedom or six degrees of freedom content. Be sure to give a like, follow, subscribe to all the different things on whatever social network that you are currently watching this on. I'm Eugene, this is Studio Cap'n, and we will see you in the next video.